So number 13, a vat of milk has spilled on a tile floor. The milk flow can be expressed with the function R of T equals 4T, where T represents time in minutes and R represents how far the milk is spreading. The spilled milk is creating a circular pattern on the tile. What is the area, or sorry, the area of the pattern can be expressed as A of R equals blah, blah, blah. Which of the following shows the area of the circle of spilled milk as a function of time? So a lot of words, all you really needed to look at were the two functions. What do these functions have in common? What letter? They both have an R. So one, it's the function R of T, and the other is the function A of R. So this is from the 6-5 lesson, because it wants us, it wants to know which of these will show the area of the milk as a function of time. So it's like a function within a function. So since they both have R in common, and R is the innermost function in this bottom one, R of T will be within brackets, and A will be the outside, because R is being plugged into the A function. So everyone see that? It's A of R, so R will be plugged in. So, Anywhere that there is an R, we're going to plug it in with the function of R, which is 4T. So anywhere that there's an R in here will be replaced with 4T. So what we get is pi in parentheses 4T squared. All right, so any confusion so far? So just from the symbols, we can cancel out C and D because it should be R plugged into the A function. And then over here, it kind of looks like the answer might be A, but it's not, and here's why. They use the power rule and distributed that exponent of two to everything inside. So what's four squared? 16, and then we distribute the 2 to the t, so then I get t squared. Bring down everything else, and normally when we have numbers in our formulas, those are our coefficients, so they just rewrote it as 16 pi t squared. That's why the answer is b. All right. Um, I will check the test if more than 70% of the class missed this one. I might make it extra credit. I mean, we did do some word problem examples or word problem examples on the exit ticket, but we'll just see. I can see how that last part was tricky, the distributing the two. So questions on this one? Questions on any other one? Yes, um, we'll do delaying this time. Uh, 12. So then number 12. All right, good one to pick because it's also a free response one on your retake tomorrow. So most of your retake is free response. I don't know if you remember the review sheet I gave out, but that's what the retake looks like. Just maybe a fewer questions. So this is a good example. These are our fogs and our goths. So when it's a function within a function. So when it's f of g of negative four, is that fog or is it goth? It is fog. So it's red f of g. So g is the innermost function. It's always the innermost being plugged into the outermost. So g into f. I think the picture helps. So since it gives me a number, G of negative four, where am I plugging in that negative four? In the G function. So for it replaces X in our G function because it's G of negative four. So G of negative four equals negative two times negative four minus five. 
So the left side is just notation. The right side, we need to simplify with order of operations. So what's negative two times negative four? Positive eight and then minus five, three. So then I have G of negative four equals three. Now three is not my answer because then I need to take G of negative four and plug that into X. So what's G of negative four? I need to plug three into the F function. That's why it's F of G of negative four. So that's what's gonna be plugged into the three X squared. That's going to replace the x. Question so far. All right, so the left side is just notation. On the right side, plug in what we got from g of negative 4, which is 3 for the x, and then solve with your order of operations. So order of operations, do we multiply or do we do exponents first? Exponents. So what's three squared? And then three times nine is 27. So that's why the answer is 27 for 12. Hardly anyone got that one right, but I'm not going to make that one extra credit because we did go over that. Questions on this one? Yes? Yes? Any questions on the test? Ricardo, you had a question, right? Yeah. Can we go over two? Number two. All right. So number two. Good one to go over. It has lots of stuff in this one. Um, first, we need to classify it by degree. So degree means what in this unit? So we're talking about the sum of exponents on a term. So the sum of exponents on a term. And then your overall degree, which is what this is asking about. So your overall degree will be whichever one is highest. So whichever is highest. So first you need to go through each term because they won't all necessarily be in standard form um, and just see what the sum of exponents is on each term. So like what would the degree be for the first term? Good, second term and last term. And we're only talking about exponents on like variables. So good. Um, what's the highest? So my overall degree is going to be two. On the free response tomorrow, because this is a good chunk of your points, I am perfectly fine with you just calling it a second degree. Perfectly fine with it. But on this problem, on your Galileo test, you needed to know like the special names. So what's the special name for a second degree? Quadratic. Quadratic. And that's why I tell you guys to bring your notes because that should have been in your notes. This one's a quadratic. Um, first degree would be the linear. So if the overall degree was um, one, then it'd be linear. Um, cubic is third degree. Quartic is what? Your fourth degree. So fourth degree would be quartic. Um, these two down here, binomial and trinomial, those don't classify by degree. They classify by what? So they classify by your number of terms. So that's why if you picked trinomial, yeah, this is a trinomial, but that's not what it was asking for. It wanted you to classify it by degree, not number of terms. It's not, it's definitely not a bias. All right, because it has three terms. All right, questions on this one? All right, any others from the test? Yes, 
number 18. Okay, so this one you needed the formula that I have written on the whiteboard right now. That was the only formula I said I'd provide you, and that's for volume. Um, so you needed to know that volume is length times width times height. And we're given a cube here. What's the length of this cube? And then what's the width of the cube? Same thing. And then what's the height of the cube? Same thing. So if you look at the picture, they're all the same because it's a cube, right? A cube has equal length, width, and height. So you could have set it up like this and then use the product rule to multiply them out. Um, or you could have used the power rule if you set it up like this. Because since they are the same dimensions for a cube, you could just have written this and put an exponent of three because it's going to be multiplied by itself three times. So either way, you do need to know both the product rule and power rule for your test. So we'll just review both. So what does the product rule say to do? To add the exponent. So if you are multiplying exponents of the same base, like x to the a times x to the b, you get x to the a plus b. Um, and since these are all being multiplied together, you really could have added them all. So like a cubed times a cubed times a cubed. What do we get? Three plus three plus three. Good. And then b to the fourth times b to the fourth times b to the fourth. Four plus four plus four is so that's why the correct answer for this one was option B, A to the ninth, B to the 12th. That's with the product rule. Questions on the product rule. So I would definitely write down my exponent rules on that piece of paper since you can't use your normal notes tomorrow. Um, over here, I have the power rule. So I'll show you that one. That's the one that says if I have an exponent raised to another exponent outside parentheses like this, make sure you distribute it to both things inside. So it becomes, well, what do we do when we're multiplying? Or sorry, I messed it up, I gave it away. So when I have a power raised to another power, what do I do with the exponents? I do not add them in the power rule. Multiply them. So x to the a raised to the b equals x to the a times b. So over here, I get a to the 3 times 3, which is what? 9. And then b to the 4 times 3, which is 12. So that's another way to get the same answer if you set it up like this. Questions on this one? Others from the test? Yes? 16. All right. So this one is easily one of the most missed ones on the test because people look at this and they think that they can use the power rule on this one. So do not. Do not use the power rule on this one. What's the first step on problems like this? To expand it, good. So if it's in this format, so a minus b squared or a plus b squared, you cannot use the power rule. You have to expand it. So for this problem, what does it look like expanded? Because exponents tell you to multiply the base by itself that many times. So that's what it would look like expanded. Make sense so far? Step two is to do what? 
Foil or double distribute? What do you guys like better? Double distribute. All right, so then if we're double distributing, take the X in the first parentheses, multiply it by everything in the second parentheses, what's X times X? X and X times negative three. Good, then what do I distribute? So negative three times X is negative three X. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. So put plus nine. We're almost done. What's the third step? Combine like terms. So what are my like terms in this one? And when I combine them, what do I get? Negative 6x. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 would be the answer, which is C. Now keep in mind, tomorrow it's for your response. So a question like this would be worth four points. Because I give you a point for each term that you write correctly. So one, two, three terms. If you have two out of the three written correctly, I'll give you two points. And then I give you another point for having it in standard form. So the instructions say to put your answers in standard form. So questions on this one? All right, any others from the test? Let's see, you guys know your quotient rule. If not, I'll write that one down on my paper x to the a over x to the b, what do we do with the exponents? Subtract them. Um, you guys know how to do this one now? It's only asking for the number in the a position. So when you multiply it out, just use the number in the a position. You guys know how to divide polynomials. All right, use your quotient rule, make sure your answer is in standard form. All right, any last minute questions? All right, I'm just going to come around, leave your papers out so I can make sure you did some work. <laughs>